All right, YouTube, today I'm gonna to be showing you how to upholster any little panel or anything else like that in your car with some carpet or any material of your choice. Now, I'm just gonna show you, I did spray these sections because right here, these support beams, I will not be putting any fabric on these sections right there or the support beam right there. So I'm gonna pretty much just carpet up everything else that you see. And I'm gonna flip it over. I just resprayed the hinge too with some flat black after priming it and removing any sort of rust that may be there. I also sprayed little sections like out there where there might have been some rust. All right, YouTube, this is the type of carpet I like to use. Basically like that OEM material that you see in trunks sometimes on some floors of some cars. I mostly use this on my trim panels. I think I got a thousand yards right here. So stay tuned and I'll show you what it looks like after I cut it out and I start to try and uh, glue it on. And I'll show you some tips on how to do that. All right, guys, what you're gonna wanna do is roll out your carpet or material and make sure you have at least two and a half times the fabric that you need to cover your panel if you're gonna do both sides with one piece. Because I'm gonna fold it over and I'm gonna stretch it over the seams in one piece to make sure it looks more seamless. And then what you're gonna wanna do is cut the fabric and start pressing on from one side. But let me show you how much fabric I have out. It's about two and a half times. So if you have extra, you can just trim it off. The worst part is being short. So I'd rather have some extra. All right, guys, what you're going to want to do is pick the side that you're going to start spraying first with your adhesive to lay it down on the material so you make sure it's nice and flat. And I'm going to show you how to do this right now. Now, this is what I like to use right now. There's a lot of brands out there. I'm not going to recommend any types right now because I'm not endorsed by anyone. And even if I was, I would make sure that I'm going to be endorsing someone who has a fair product. Now I do recommend 3M products by my own experience. Usually most of their products work. This one's not the strongest one they have out there, but this is pretty good. So just use this one if you want. And let's get on spraying. Just lather it up. You don't have to be too technical, but you don't want to wait too long either. Then I want you to flip the product over and start working in every crevice and pressing it in with your hand so make sure it looks fitted and clean. Anywhere that's a little loose you can always pull the fabric over. I'm going to spray a bit more adhesive and then you start to work it out. The rest of the area looks pretty good already. I already have some dust on it. That's not the problem. We're going to pretty much detail this rug once it's done. Pressed it up against the area that I need to be. Here's one of the hinges. I left in a fabric right here so it can stretch with a little bit of the hinge right there. And what you're going to want to do is start to work the edges like I said. You can use a hot glue gun or I like more of like a brush on adhesive. But whatever you got on hand is pretty much going to work for you. And I'm going to show you how to make more decreases as I go. Right now I'm just checking the adhesion. Like right here, it needs a little bit more glue. And then I'll show you how to do that edge right there. All right, what you're gonna wanna do is get your hot glue gun, glue it in. Nice, thin bead. Can't wait too long, because you know how hot glue dries real fast. Work from the top of the panel to make sure you bring the crease with you. And if you have any more slack on the bottom, we're going to pull that tighter when we go to the back side because we're going to flip this over and I'll show you how to fix that. All right, guys, since we already got the other side all glued up, I'm going to show you how to upholster the next side and tie everything in and make sure it all looks fluent. And this is why we're going to pull it this way and we're going to stretch the fabric over and I'm going to show you how to deal with the edges next. All right, what I want you to do now is grab your product, whatever you're using, and stretch it over and make sure you have enough product 
so you don't go on further and make sure that you don't screw yourself out of a product that you'll like. See, so yeah, I definitely have enough product right now. It looks like I pretty much a tunnel over it. Like I said, I made sure I had two and a half times the amount of product because I was going to cover both sides. And remember, I'm showing you guys how to do this when you're at home without too many supplies and make sure it's a professional finish. I've been doing this for a while and I just wanted to show you guys that you guys can do it at home too. If you're not at your shop or if you don't own a shop, we have a shop. Thanks again for all your support out there. I do film these videos and show you guys how to use tools that you might have at home. And I make sure that I'm trying to be as clear as possible. So if I leave out some details, you're always free to ask me in the comment section and spread positivity and light out there, guys. I also make these videos in some areas that aren't in my shop because I want to show you guys that you can still do things in the off time if you don't have a shop. Um, I like to do my body work in a tent outside of my shop. That way we are all safer when we're inside the building and all that body work dust that causes cancer and everything else isn't flying around. And we make sure it's never anywhere that's not environmentally controlled. You guys have been doing it for a long time out there. I'm sure you guys know a lot about what we're talking about. All right, let's get on to wrapping this. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to spread glue on that edge back there where you're pulling it tight so that there's no sags going on on the other side of the panel. You're going to use that pressure that you're using right now to pull it tight. And think of like a rubber band. Like I know you're stretching it. But this is an elastic, but think of like a rubber band. As you pull it, it seems to get stiffer, right? Well, this is what you're kind of doing right here. You're pulling it stiffer. It's not going to bounce back as long as you glue it. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue that edge. And since I'm only one person right now, and I'm technically doing this out of the shop, I just want to show you guys how to do this at home by yourself with some professional tools and some stuff. And if you don't have the professional tools, I'm sure you guys can find a hot glue gun that's not professional grade. So you can use the spray glue in some areas. I like to use the hot glue on this edge, on any edge of any sort of panel that you're working on. Hot glue usually holds better than that spray glue sometimes or contact cement. So hold on, I need both hands. What you're going to want to do is cut out where there is um, some rubber areas. This is a little bumper to hold it up from the metal and not scratch things i gotta cut it out so just use your box knife or scissors and i'll show you i gotta put this down but you're gonna cut it out and trim it and then glue this air make sure you don't remove too much it's always better to leave it buried right now i'm gonna leave this buried in there it kind of looks better looks flush clean and a little bit of rubber right there and carpet won't look bad i'm gonna actually trim it back and make sure it looks cleaner before i glue it down all right, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this carpet in this crease right here on this side of the fold, not the first part of the flap. And that way we can tuck it in. And we're going to use this piece and stretch it over and bring it underneath that lip right there. All right, you're going to want to spray mark glue down like I did, and then you're going to work it out and press it into those curves and start from the center and work your way out. All right, guys, I got it pretty much all pressed out. I just gotta cut out the area where that um, support is right here that holds the panel up. So let me cut that out. I took the hinge off and I'm about to put the hinge slash support back on. I tucked everything in and I'm gonna show you guys how to do those corners next. I'm working all these edges and corners and make sure everything's down. I decided not to cut this out. I thought it would look nicer and it actually does. It looks a lot more clean. Just remember, this is part of the trunk, and it's going to look really nice back there. Uh, it goes underneath the passenger seat of the uh, 64 Wagoneer, the custom one that we've been working on at our shop. And if you're interested in that, just remember it's going to be for sale soon. It's um, just getting restored right now, so if you have any um, interest, just give us a call or send us an email, and you can uh, try to put a little reserve on it for when it's done. All right, guys, I'll show you guys how to cut up all those corners, and let's get this project done.